Welcome back to the second part and today we are going to install the motor on the rear wheel. We are going to transfer the existing disc brake and the gears onto the motor. We are going to install a new uh, tire and a new air tube because those ones are very old and it should be plenty of uh, things to do. So stay with me and see how this goes. First, we are going to start by taking off the rear wheel, so just two screws to untighten. And also on the other side. Okay, so now they are loose on both sides. And now it's very easy to take the wheel out, you just push it a bit up and there you go. You need to take a bit of caution with the disc brake not to bend it. And that's with the wheel and now things start to get messy uh, first we are going to need this uh, special tool this is for Shimano freewheel type uh, gears so I need to remove this uh, screw here this uh, nut and then you are going to fix this here it has splines it has 12 splines so it fits here inside this is very hard to remove so you are going to need a lot of force and for that I'm going to use a 22 adapter and a ratchet and fix this over here and there is no uh, need to use and cannot use a locking tie for uh, uh, a key for the pinions for the gears you need to hold the wheel very tight and force it <coughs> and <coughs> now this is loose and you can take the gears out so now we have a lot of turns to do and there you go the gears are off from the wheel and this is uh, what I was telling you about the motor you can order it with screw mount here or cassette type so this is free wheel type now on the other side of the wheel we are going to remove the brake disc and this one uses hex screws And with all the screws out, you can take the disc. Uh, caution with the disc because uh, you have some uh, grease there. You don't want to make the grease uh, reach the disc because that's going to affect the brakes. So try to keep it clean and not put your greasy hands on the friction uh, part of the disc. And now it's time to install the disc and the gears back, the pinions. I'm going to remove this uh, rubber band from the wires here. Okay, and remove this cap. And also all the nuts and bolts here, and washers and whatever there is. And now I'm going to insert the disc. And you need also to take care of the uh, direction of the disc, of how you install it as it has some arrows here you need to figure that out and we need to untighten the screws that will hold the disc the motor comes with the screws included so you don't have to reuse the old ones and you also get this washer here uh, depends on your build in my case I am going to try to take it out because I want to keep the assembly as uh, narrow as possible and I'm going to pass the wires through the disc you can see if uh, this fits on the hub fits like a glove perfect and now I'm going to put the screws back
All right, so the disc brake is installed, and now comes the funny part, or the weird part, on the installation of the gears. If you take a close look at this, uh, you can see it has a thread here, and the thread it's somehow uh, not on the surface of the gears, but it's a bit uh, at the internal. It has about 20 millimeters of distance and what happens when you put this there uh, it will go in so much that the biggest gear here will actually touch the motor the motor here and that will actually lock this and the free wheel will stop working which is not okay and for that you are going to need some washers you can talk with the seller to provide you such kind of washers. I didn't have washers with mine because I didn't know I have this type of gears because the seller will also uh, send you correct gears if you want to buy the gears from him. Uh, I wanted the simplest kit and the cheapest one with no added accessories and you need some type of washers like these ones and these have different thickness so I need now to juggle with the correct one that will go like this and will keep the gears from not going in too much so the external biggest gear will not rub on the motor and will not block the rotating part here the internal flywheel system or freewheel system or cricket system or one-way system as you wish to call it and I've chosen a washer and now let's see if this goes well so it's in position and it uh, has uh, not locked and I have plenty of space here you also need to judge that you have enough space for the chain to go uh, around here and not touch the motor so this should be just perfect and now the moment of truth is to see if uh, this will fit uh, in the bike frame again and uh, also we are going to take about the washers and why we get so many type of washers and that is because we have this one which is uh, um, straight on two sides and rounded on the others we have this normal rounded one we have this one with this notch here and we get two of each type so uh, it goes like this first you need to protect the motor shaft and to protect it when it goes inside the frame you are going to use the this one that's going to be on the shaft also this uh, acts as a spacer because otherwise the gears will rub onto the bike frame here so you need to put the gears a bit farther from the frame then on the other side you are going also to use another one of these And now, going to try to put the motor in. And with a bit of struggle and forcing a bit the frame to make it a bit more open, the washer has went in and now the gears will work and will not rub. While on the other side we also have enough space here to put the washer but there is a small problem with the disc and the caliper so I'm going to remove the caliper to uh, make the installation more easier and after that we are going to readjust the rear brake so that the caliper matches with the disc perfectly so we can do it not rub and for now it will allow us to install the motor easier. And there you go, it goes in perfectly. So now we know that we are on the right way of uh, completing the installment of the motor, but we need to take it off because we can ride it that way. We actually need a tire and an air tube on that. And now we are going to install those and also that red protection band. All right, so we need to locate the hole for the valve and it's here and we have this hole here so we are going to line them up and 
I'm going to put this. This is flexible, so you are going to force it over. And now we need to put half of the tire on. And if your tire is uh, directional, you should take that also into account how to uh, install it. So with the tire installed on uh, one side, now we need to insert the air tube and you need to start with the valve, always with the valve, so there's a space there for the valve. I'm going to pry the tire that way, so I'm going to insert the valve first. And when the valve gets out on the other side, I'm going to start to put the air tube around and that's how you do it and with the tube installed now we can put the tire back luckily this tire is very soft so you can actually install it with your bare hands almost so just a tiny bit here and now it is installed now I'm also going to put some air pressure into it just a tiny amount for now very soft but I'm going to try to adjust it a bit so uh, it's equally installed on both sides and around the rim is centered so it doesn't wobble so I'm just going to massage it a bit around and now I'm going to put some more air into it That's just perfect for now because this is going to have a lot more PSI than this. There's also a recommendation here on the tire with some pressure rating and stuff like that, but I'm going to use common sense and I will probably put about 35 to 40 PSI. And now it's time to put the motor in its rightful place. Don't forget to put the washers that I have shown you before. And now we can do a quick test. So, seems to be working. Uh, the shifter also works perfectly. It's still aligned in the same position. So all the gears work as they should, except, except the tallest gear, the highest gear. And the problem comes from uh, these uh, motor screws here that are going to hit the derailleur. But this happens only on uh, the biggest gear there, so not a real issue as uh, you can always adjust the derailleur that will it will not go up to the last gear there um, you could correct this by adding some of the washers that i have shown you at the beginning of the video and making the gears uh, further from the motor but that means that you need to have more space here so you need to widen up the frame a lot more and that's very hard to do on this frame because it's very narrow so I am actually at maximum because you also need to add those washers in there so I'm going to lose that gear but it's not a big con because with such big motor you are never going to need that and now the washers on this side so first uh, you are going to use this one and the notch will go in that opening there this is a 
it's not a torque arm. On this motor you should also get a torque arm. That's a way to stabilize the motor shaft uh, because it has a lot of power and torque. Not to over rotate and get out of the frame or break this part here. So with a torque arm you put that and you have a metal plate that holds with a bracket on uh, the frame and gives the whole assembly more rigidity. Uh, this kind of does that and uh, protects the motor from spinning there. Then you are going to use the normal washer. And last but not least, you can fix the nut. And the same goes on the other side. And now, time to secure it. And now we need to put the brake caliper back again. And we have to readjust it to see how this will fit. And sometimes you might also need some additional washers as this might be too further now from the bracket here. But that's not a problem. Just going to use some spacers. And on this uh, brake caliper, uh, there's also this uh, bracket, adjustment bracket. So if I loosen up these uh, two screws on the side here, it has a bracket that can uh, be adjusted pretty much. So uh, maybe I will not need so many washers or just a tiny amount of washers. I'm going to check that. So it's getting very close to the disc. And now with the brake adjusted, we have uh, finished the mechanical install of the motor kit. And now we need to do the electrics, but that's going to be the part three of uh, this uh, video series. So be sure to follow my next uploads and soon you're going to get uh, that uh, part also. Until then, see you and bye bye.